Hello, fellow fantasy sports fans. Welcome to MFSN The Hub's fantasy baseball strategy show. Every Thursday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific, I'm Dr. Dan Radner, and I'm here, as always, with Casey Vlad to the Bone Scheinfold and Ross the Boss. Hey, everybody, I'm Ross the Boss. Welcome to MFSN's fantasy baseball show. I'm excited about the Tampa Bay Rays. They swept Pittsburgh today. They're 20 games over 500. Are they the best team in baseball, yes or no? The answer yes. is yes, but I think there's so many surprises here. I mean, we're surprised that they swept the Pirates. Like, that's surprising because that nobody's been doing that. Who thought that would be the, the biggest battle of the weekend in May if you were talking to anybody about <laughs> fantasy baseball or baseball? Who would think, like, think like in April, like you're saying, okay, I'm buying some single game tickets. Oh, the Rays are playing the Pirates. Better oh, get yeah. down to that one. Sign me up. You know, do you think any, any of you guys want to go to the game? Are there, those games, it's a waste of time. Where are you going to that game? You know, All the reality sudden, is, the hottest ticket in town. It could be, it could be a preview of the World Series. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> it's not likely uh, with the Pirates. I don't think. I hope make it, it is. Far. I It'd hope be awesome. it is because Major League Baseball would be crying about oh, the market. The best. Oh, the I love when like that happens. It. As as a oh. Guardians fan, I, I love when they talk about the markets. I'm like, whatever. Okay, give me the small market teams. Uh, let's talk headlines, guys. What are, what are the big headlines of this week? Uh, Justin Verlander well, just came back. He's Casey's coming back jumping today, up and down. Said. Casey, why don't you tell who just caught off the DL list and is starting the outfield for your fantasy Well, yeah, that's team. the that's the biggest story of the week is Bryce Harper coming Bryce back Harper. 158 right. days after Tommy John surgery. That's pretty pretty it's impressive, insane. even if just a DH. That's amazing. And last night he had he ripped he went two for four didn't he or two for five so I think he was three for three at one point I think it was like three for three at one point oh, too. was he I just I yeah. saw uh, Albert Marroquin good afternoon a very Hello, polite sir. polite greeting but, and we are I mean glad I to mean see that, that's one of the biggest I mean your guy your your Cy Young winner Justin Verlander pitched today gave up two bombs in the first inning. I think he gave up three home runs all together. Is that what, is that what he did? That's because uh, there were only Daniel two. owns him. There were only two, but I was totally not only surprised. Two. Did yeah, you I'm, start him? I'd started him. Of course he did. He's, a, he's I mean, a believer. It was against Detroit. The chance of him letting off four runs in five innings was high. And <laughs> it, it worked out okay. You know, I just wanted the ERA under nine and he got there. Uh, listen, guys, on on in in our in our main league, the keeper league, my pitching is insane and my hitting is like I hit in high school. Like did I you, can't did reach you play base. in high school. Of course. Uh, in, in in my freshman year, yes. I nice. went uh, I went over for five uh with four strikeouts. But they still talk about they made contact the high on that fifth one. I did. I yeah. it was a foul out. They still there talk about him. Yeah. They still say what a great player he was. I mean, those stats are are accurate, by the way. Uh, That's exactly what I did. So, other headlines: Bryce Harper, obviously Aaron Judge. I think the amount Aaron Judge the stars on the IL is the kind of. I mean, other headlines: the the Yankees. I mean, the Yankees. Let's talk about the Yankees, please. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I started Tanner Bybee. Oh, yesterday, Casey. I don't know if you know this. Your 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 broadcaster. uh, What's his name? K. Uh, Michael K. Michael K. He does TV. Sterling does the radio. K. K after the get after the game yesterday, K. and in a in a in a fan got into it, uh, yelling, screaming. I think there was some physical contact. Not quite sure what happened, but a physical. You know, a fan was a you know just saying, "Listen, you don't you don't talk bad about your Yankees in the front office or even the manager." And, and K. took offense to it, and it was like it wasn't pretty. And, wow. I hadn't heard that. It was a bad thing. I mean, Casey, Yankee fan, do you think Boone should be fired or do you think he should just keep his job? What what do you think is going on in New York? I don't think he should be fired uh, at this point. I don't think he's done a terrible job managing. I would question the strength and conditioning coach or whoever is the preventative medicine guy there because, look, you got – like what was the on May first? It was Judge, Bader, Severino, Donaldson, Rodon, Loisaga, Stanton – Canley, Trevino, Montas, all on the IL. Like that's those. That's a starting squad for a lot of teams, and that's who our IL is. And we're still over 500. So if you look at it that way, Boone's doing a pretty good job considering what he's missing. Um, but you have to question why so many are getting hurt. 
Yeah, and listen, I mean, we can get into that. This is my area of expertise in terms of pain and that sort of thing. I'll tell you, you know, I don't know how it is for the Guardians, but certainly for the Cleveland Browns who work with a particular uh, hospital, it's a disaster. And I've seen it myself because I went wow. to re rehab there and it's like <laughs> they're insanely bad. And wow. a lot of hospitals are that way. So, you know, it really teams need to get wise to the fact that they've, they've got to get on board with the right health protocols or they're going to send people to the IL all the time. And maybe the Yankees are in that mess. Uh, other other injuries, because, you know, injuries can be a big part, especially in, in these early. Well, parts is, DeGrom still, is, is DeGrom still hurt? DeGrom still hurt. Mm -hmm. They haven't really announced what it really is, but he's gone for at least four weeks. I read it should uh, be called a DeGrom. Because I have no he idea what it is. Time. I mean, we were talking about like how great he is. That was the steal of the draft. And I mean, I was going on and you know, compliment. And all of a sudden he. he I don't think I was. And, yeah, he's too much I, of an injury risk. I mean, listen. When when a guy does it over and over again, so even if it's twice, but let alone three times, then you're just like, he's injury prone. I can't trust him, you know. Um, you know, then there's guys like Max Scherzer. Uh 40 who, years old, Max Scherzer. Uh he's back, I think, today. He pitched, he pitched no, yesterday. Did he yesterday. pitch yesterday and pitch poorly? He pitched poorly, he, oh, he pitched he's back badly, from his 10 yes. day suspension. He didn't have the sticky stuff. Old. 40 years old. Hey, Anthony, Anthony Rodriguez in the house. Uh, but, you know, again, age is showing in a lot of these older pitchers right now. I mean, you know, they re it really is. You know, these well, guys. Are yeah. Except Clayton Kershaw, apparently, because he's pitching lights out right now. Oh, yeah. He'll end up on the IL at some point, especially if he has a kid. That's, it happens all the time. I predict. Kid, IL. If the Dodgers are in the playoff hunt, they'll rest him the whole month of September, or maybe August. Um, they'll say some fake injury like they did last year, and they'll just shelf him up so he's ready. To <laughs> he's not a bitter non-Dodgers fan, is he? <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I mean, there was no injury. He just they, they just, he just saved the guy for the playoffs. Playoffs, yeah, that's what they playoffs. did. Playoffs, and you know, because they they already clinched the playoff spot or they were close of it. So instead of pitching Kershaw, they just they just uh, they just said he was hurt. Okay, let, let's the, talk. Let's talk some rookie pitchers because this is a time okay. of year where you do get injuries and you got to fill people in. And I'm always I'm always fascinated by the fact that the rookie hitters they just they take a while to come around. Yep. But some of the rookie pitchers they come. No, there, there's right a away. lot of good, there's a lot of good rookie pitchers, and I mean I've talked about it before the draft, and I feel this year there's there's like really like a whole group of them that that, that are going to be really good in the next couple of years. Let's see. Can you name five right away? Sure. Are you ready? Gavin Stone for the Dodgers. I love this kid. He was unbelievable. The minors, he was great. He's, he's I love this guy. He's going to give you he, 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 He'll get, again, these guys will, won't have perfect starts every here, time. I'm going to let, I'm going to let Albert give you a little cheat here. I, yeah, I, I like Ryan Nelson. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the fat. I'm getting the Brandon fat. I like Brandon fat a lot. I like what Arizona's doing in their, in their farm system, Andrew Fats part of it. So is Ryan Nelson. He's another starter for Arizona who should have been. He should he should be hearing his name more. Fat should have made the team beginning of the year. I was mad he was in the minors. He got shellacked yesterday, didn't he? Well, he kind of did. But actually, if you if you watched the game or you checked out the stats, he pitched pretty well in the first couple of innings. Then he started to get hit, and the manager just seemed to leave him in. It was and the the idea seemed to be that they wanted to get him that win. They want him to learn, and that's how you do it. I love Hunter Brown in Houston. I love this kid. He started oh, yeah. the year hurt, and now he's back. I love Hunter Brown. I think this guy's the real got the real deal. And I picked this guy to be the Rookie of the Year in case he knows knows who it is. It's Grayson Rodriguez. And I said beginning of the year that this is going to be the Rookie of the Year. I love this guy. He's a big flame flamethrower and um, and listen ross to you to give you proper eight. credit casey and i both we had we had soured on him we thought no, i don't think he's going to deliver this year and he's starting to look quite good clearly and and i don't i love uh, this guy you know he hasn't made the majors yet but andrew painter of philadelphia mm -hmm. i unbelievable stuff i mean yeah, yeah oh you see so didn't mention tanner bybee anthony tanner bybee was tanner bybee i'm leaving to you because I have re I'm respect for you guys. I and appreciate Tanner that. Bybee, I'll let you give his praises. I just wanted to name five because you guys didn't think I can name five, which I did. But you can talk about Tanner Bybee. What do you go I ahead? never would have put you on the spot if I didn't think you could do it. 
Okay. Actually, that's not true. I would have done it either way. But okay. I, I, okay. I did have confidence in you. Okay. So uh, I can eat more, but ten, Tanner Bybee, I think you should talk about. Go ahead. Tanner Bybee, is, he, he's, a pro, he's a priority pickup at this point. And let's see, how, own, how, how rostered is he at this point? Let me check this I out. I think he's under 50 still, isn't 44%. he? 44%. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how the number is that low. He's looked really good. He was great in the minors. Uh, in, in recent years, the Guardians really know how to crank out good young pitching. And so I, I trust him entirely. In fact, I think you want to pick up Logan Allen also. I have them both. And if you think I'm a homer, I can promise you, I have no other Guardians on my team. <laughs> In fact, I, I don't even know who is playing at a lot of the positions. But those two pitchers are the kind of pitchers you can bring in. I picked, up, I picked them both up and immediately dealt Dustin May. Because Dustin May's numbers didn't look that good to me. His strikeouts were down. He was walking a lot of guys. And, and he had a bigger name. And I was like, I'm going to deal Dustin May and let Tanner Bybee and Logan Allen pick up the slack there. I'm very confident in the two of them. You know, and, and they're already looking really good. Brandon Fatt, I think, you know, his debut was not great. But it wasn't the easiest debut. It was at Texas. And he actually pitched well for four innings. They wanted to get him the win. They left him in too long. And, you know, he was a rookie. I, I still think he's got a, a bright future. I oh, did, he's great. I did he's cut him. <laughs> um, because I, I need to be able to trust the pitchers that I have going right now. But he's he's still very worth a pickup. Case, how about you? Rookie pitchers, what are you thinking? Rookie pitchers, and, and Ross has said this from the beginning, have a lot more success a lot quicker than, than rookie hitters do because they have the advantage. and. Uh, right. I mean, it's, pitching it's harder to hit a, it's harder to hit a baseball than it is to, to, to if throw league average is what, 247 or something like that. Right. I mean, the pitcher has a major advantage. Uh, Grayson Rodriguez to Ross's credit has looked great. The last couple starts, he's finally figured it out. It was a rough start for him to the season. Brandon Fott had a really bad debut. Gavin Stone didn't have a very good debut either, but these are guys you, you don't expect them to come up and be Shohei Otani right away. Um, I don't, I think you have to be patient with rookie pitchers. Um, I just, you know, speaking of, I picked up Ross, a, a Reds prospect pick, pitcher the other day, although uh, Andrew Abbott. Oh yeah. yeah I know not, not as, not, maybe not as well known as um, Brandon Williamson or Levi Stout in, in Cincinnati, but this guy so far between double A AA and triple A is two and O with a 1.4 ERA and 51 punch outs in 25 innings. Um, if Cincinnati, I, I don't think he's good. I don't know if he's going to get called up, but I wanted to make sure he was on my roster on the end of the bench if he did, uh, because like those numbers are like Kyle Harrison did it last year in San Francisco and made himself a big name. That's the kind of thing Abbott's doing right now. So he's somebody I, uh, would recommend people keeping an eye on. It's just kind of amazing ha having to keep track of the rookies. It's, it's crazy because the amount of call-ups there are so many of them. And by the way, it's, I, I feel like it's changing quite a bit because if you look at prospect lists, they'll say ETA 2025 and then two weeks later they're called. Yeah. Up now the, the new CBA has, has incentivized teams to promote their, their prospects much more quickly. So it becomes much more important to, to keep an eye on, on those sort of farm, uh, farm games and watching the top prospects at double A and triple A to see if and when they'll get the call. Okay, so we said hitters, rookie hitters, much slower to develop. It's harder to get things out out, out of them. Uh, let, let's jump over to, uh, before I get into rookie hitters, Albert Merriquin has a question. What do you all think of Bryce Miller, the rookie pitcher for the Mariners? He looked really, really good the last, his first start. It was Miller, Mason Miller against Bryce Miller. And uh, didn't he, did he have like a no hitter through seven or something to that effect? It was one of them had a no hitter going and got pulled because he'd never thrown more than four or five innings in a game. And so that maybe that was Kotze. Maybe that was Oakland's Mason Miller. Have, let me I don't look. know. Bryce Miller had two hits in the, in Bryce in the Miller, Okay. Then it was, must have been. It, it yeah, must, yeah. I mean, Bryce is one of these guys, future ahead of him, high ceiling. I like him. Great stuff. Great slider. 
uh, how yes. good is that Seattle rotation looking right now with and and, with and Logan one of Gilbert the best pitchers and, is that for the year? I mean, you know, we talked about him. You know, it's, well, I don't think Robbie Ray is one of the best pitchers, but he's a. He's I said a, one of the best pitchers on. He's the, a one-year uh, wonder. I would argue he's an innings burner. Doctor Dan Ratner loves him. I think you're both right. He is an innings yes. burner who was a one-year wonder. You guys did it. You perfectly. son of a. Okay. You're right. <laughs> Okay, Anthony Rodriguez commenting on Bryce Miller. says, Bryce Miller looked dominant, but it was Oakland. We need to see how he does against the better teams. I definitely agree with that. However, um, the way I think about roster spots is scoop him up now. Don't wait. Because it's when he explodes against a, a better team and you're like, he was for real, just hold him for now. You right. Know, if, he look, if he looks that good, hold him. You I'd, know, rather, you know? I'd rather be early on the train and wrong than late getting yes. to one and I'd rather be on the train than right. not on it. Right. Um, now <laughs> if you, if you don't have <laughs> Ross was like, what does that even mean? Now li listen, if you don't have the roster spots, obviously you can't do that as well. But right. um, you know, with Brandon fat, one of the reasons I cut him for now and have him on my watch list is he didn't pitch well, which means his value went down and I probably can afford to let it, you know, let him pitch again. However, if he dominates, I may lose out on him, but I needed the roster spot. Yeah, but so, you gotta remember in, when you pick up these rookie pitchers, it's important that you know what team they play for. If they play on the A's, I mean, how many wins is gonna have this year? In all seriousness. A wins is only one category. Negative one. And and the truth is in some ways there might be an advantage for a pitcher pitching with the A's because when a team plays them, they go in thinking, oh, we can rest some of our bigger players. I mean, you have to there look at the lineups they're thrown at against them because the Oakland True. A's are pretty much a triple-A team at this point. The double-A. I, I was no, double-A sure. double are usually the top Double-A is usually better. Okay, they're single-A. <laughs> single-A. Speaking of which, I just scooped Independent up, league, okay? We'll say they're I, independent league. I just league. scooped up a rookie, Sally. a rookie hitter for the A's. Who is it? I want to see if you can guess. Is it Rooker? No, Rooker, Rooker, I have I've been all over. Rooker, you have. Time. Don't call I mean, him Hooker. It's Rooker. Rooker's uh, Rooker's uh, roster ship is up to I think seventy nine percent. How it is, is it even it's that like, low? I checked today. It's it's. It, he's been high. insane. Is he this he's, good? Let, let, before I even get to the rookie uh, that I picked up. We, we no one knows. No one knows these guys. Yeah, it's this isn't one we've heard of. It doesn't mean he's not that good but he wasn't one of the top names in the minors for the past couple of years. I have no idea who it is. Who did you pick up? No idea. Okay. Um, this is funny. I picked him up and I'm like, wait, what was his name? <laughs> Tyler Soderstrom. He, he has catcher eligibility and first base. And people were talking about how he, and he's got a lot of power. Okay. So, Ice predicts you dropped him. You drop him by June 1st. Um, that is, uh, I think, a uh, an optimistic uh, prediction. I probably oh, wow. won't hold him for that long. However, I was going to say June first. I was thinking May seventh. Right. I mean, it could happen fast. But the, here's the reason I did it. You know, if I start to hear rumblings that he's going to get called up, he's got catcher eligibility and might be playing at a different position. So I was like, I'm playing yeah. with a roster spot right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like Dalton Varsho. Yeah. So I mean, and meanwhile, I just traded, uh, Heim. And who Jonah Hyde. I mean, he he's the number one catcher in baseball in fantasy baseball right now. Is, is that going to last? I, I didn't is think it, so. Sean Murphy's been super hot lately. too. Actually, Sean Murphy has overtaken Heim. And I, 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 thought, I, I thought Murphy's I number one. He has like eight home runs. Well, Heim was number one three days ago. And then Murphy yeah. went banana. Yeah and, Murphy, and, yeah. and you and I talked about this a couple of days ago, not on the show, but Heim will lose some value when Garver comes back. Yep, and I scooped up Garver because I had an IL spot, so you know I needed to replace catcher. But I need I need some hitting. Who are the hitters that are out there that can help out right now? Because Rooker is a great example. I picked him up. My hitting was terrible in our keeper league, and Rooker makes a big difference. I still well, need work, but that helps. Well, today the Cubs made a big move on their high top big. prospect. Big, big, big. Move. Oh, did they this call up Mervis? Move. They called up. They Mervis. called up Matt Mervis. Matt that's Mervis. A, that's a priority start. pickup. Matt Mervis left Iowa. He's in Chicago. He's going to start tomorrow. And this guy's their top prospect. I mean, this guy can hit homers. And Wrigley Field is an easy place to hit homers. Um, yeah. I, clearly. I, I don't, if you need a first baseman and you, you want to take a chance on a rookie, this is a good guy to do it with, guys. What do you think? I just picked him up. <laughs> what? 
Yes, while we were talking, I went to our MFSN league and picked him up because he's he's got an NA spot still. <laughs> and I'm like, you know up. what? I can trade Vinny Pasquantino. Uh, I could even trade Freddie Freeman if I want to. If, if... Pasquantino, the past two weeks, Dan, he's hitting over 300. So oh, no, he looks I, good. He, he looks I don't good. want you to start whining about him. You know, he's... He's getting better. I can't so, start whining about him because I've already been doing it for a while. You've been doing it all season. I'm sick of it. So is yeah. Tacey. We're sick of uh, it. I mean, the problem is the Royals, they seem to get like four base runners a game. You, you know who else is that v- available at first base? And he plays outfield too. Lamont Wade Jr. Yeah, not senior Casey. Wade Jr. He's he's this guy. Past three, two weeks. Casey and I love the two-week thing to see, you know, Talk to Dan Ratner. Oh, oh, I know. I know. Five I'm home runs, five home runs in two weeks, hitting 316. And he's eligible at like first, a third, outfield. I mean, this guy plays everywhere. And I I love his name, Lamont. What, what TV shows that from? Real I was quick. gonna Go. ask Sanford and Sanford. Shit. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Uh I thought I thought I'll get you on that. Uh Great. Grady. He, he passed. He passed. Even Grady, uh, I know. Geez, unbelievable. But um, Lamont Wade Jr., he's one of my top three pickups this week. If you need if you need somebody in the outfield or first base or third, I mean, he's just killing the ball. Elizabeth, I'm coming to join you. I, I can't help myself. All right. All right. Anthony Rodriguez saying Jaron Duran. What do we say about Duran at this point? I mean. Well, I, I recommended him, I think, last week or in a short recently. You did. The guy is kind of that. I think people were saying Jacoby Ellsbury, that power speed combination. And I think. It's it's possible. I think he's more of a Johnny Damon type, not quite as dynamic as Ellsbury in his prime, but can t- contribute in all five categories. Boston is playing lights out right now, and Duran was a former number one prospect in the organization, so it's one of those post hype sleepers that we like to talk about so much because, um, you know, he gets forgotten, and it's not like he lost his talent. He probably went down, fixed something mechanical, and hopefully now when he comes well, back up, I he's mean- going to be successful. I mean, Anthony, this guy's a speed guy. He's a power guy, and he's the huge bright spot in their order right now. Well, there's um, a – And you, Boston, I think they've won five in a row or six in a row in Boston. They play – I know they play in a couple hours. Yeah, and, I think uh, you also – keep an eye on Tristan Cassis. I think he's starting to figure it out. And I, I love well, last night he was huge. But what about Connor Wong, the catcher? I mean, mm-hmm. if you're looking for a catcher, the guy in the last two weeks has – He's not hitting over 400. There's no way he's hitting over 400. 406 with three what? runs and a stolen base from the catcher position. He chipped in wow. a stolen base. No, so he's uh he's on my list to watch. Um you know, I unfortunately I don't need him. Right See, I don't now, think you watch catchers. I think you take catchers if you need it. Because... You know, you know who's the number I just read this. You know who's the number one uh hitter right now in the past two weeks in fantasy baseball is? Well, it was Brandon Drury for a while, but I don't think it is now. Escoquel Duran. Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel uh, Duran. Oh man, that was like ready made for Ross to try yeah, to no. pronounce. Ezekiel Duran of Texas, 415, no. three home runs, 10 RBIs the past two weeks. Uncle Ted. Uncle Ted. And he's says, available. He's under 60%. And he plays multiple positions. You're stealing Uncle Ted's thunder. Uncle Ted said, What up? And then he said, Ezekiel Duran oh, I didn't all see day. It. I just yeah, I, I, I wanted to ask. And this is the other Duran. So, you know, you it sounds like you you are a believer. And Uncle Ted clearly is. Case, what about you? I'm I'm not as much of a believer as everybody else because, um, I'm, I mean, I'd I, be excited to add him. Especially... Yeah, I would play him right right now. He would fit. You know, I don't it, think long term. It depends term, on your lineup construction. I mean, there, yeah. there's going to be guys like him who you'll want to pick up, but maybe you don't have room, or maybe it's you know you look at your roster construction and you're like, you know what, I'm overbalanced an outfield and this guy has second base, third base and short shortstop eligibility. Maybe I swap somebody out like that. And this is the time of the season where you end up cutting players. Like you guys know, I cut say Suzuki this, this past week. I just had too many outfielders. I was like, I don't have room for him and he's just not playing well enough. I mean, because right, last year I was disappointed with Suzuki last year. I, I, I didn't touch him at all this year. I uh, horrible. Yeah. I think right horrible now things. I would, I would rather have um, Nick Senzel. Speaking of the Reds, I must be a Reds fan today, Ross. Well, you're welcome. No, keep, um, keep mentioning Reds. I love it. Third third base outfield eligibility, two of the thinner positions, and his numbers are over the last couple of weeks are, are top 20 as well. Miguel Vargas is starting to figure out. And He's heating up. 
This is a guy yeah, who's hit at, his hit at every level. And in the last seven days, he's batting 280 with two home runs and a steal. In the last 14 days, let's see if I can. And in on, in on base percentage leagues, it's even better. Three, three home runs for, um, for Vargas. Yeah. Vargas is a guy that, Casey, you talked about. I mean, you told me how, how, he, how the Dodgers love this guy. And he started the season very slow, but he's heating up. And I agree with you. It's a good pickup right now. Right. Like, I, and, and Anthony pointed this out too. And this was my thinking about, about Duran is this is a guy who's been streaky in the past. And so, yes, I'd be excited to pick him up, but as soon as he cools off, I would probably end up dropping him because he doesn't seem like one who does any sort of prolonged success. Right. I hope he hits, I hope he hits 400 this year. I hope he I hope he's league MVP and all you guys eat your I mean, words. I th- look, it. this, I this does happen though. I hope so too, for his sake. Yeah. And, and look, this does happen. These, these guys, isn't he Texas? He's yeah. Texas. And so as soon as Seager comes back, it's not like he's going to start over Seager or Simeon. This is not no, a guy. No, no, no. If he's hitting like this, he'll be, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. If They'll he's find hitting. Him well, Josh like Jung is, is ripping the cover off the ball. You're not okay. benching your $70 million infield okay. for uh, Zeke there's Duran. There's a I just... called DH, DH position. Uh-huh. Can he Where play they... in the outfield? Yes. He might have to try. Can he play catcher? And then I'll and pick pitch at the well, same time. Well, that's Jonah and Mitch Garver. Oh, yep, that's true. Well, this is trouble. You know, you know who's heating up, and I talked about him beginning of the year. Is C.J. Abrams of the Washington Nationals? He's he's uh, a guy that like last week he had a he had a clutch grand slam. He had a home run to you know game it, all these game winners the past week, and he's hitting he's hitting the past two weeks like three hundred and ten RBIs. I mean, he's really really heating up right now and he hasn't even stolen a base the past two weeks that's what he's known for is stealing bases ross this oh. is this is a game that i think we need to start playing it, it's does casey know what i'm thinking because a lot of times he does <laughs> so Casey's, what do you guys I, think about cj abrams and Casey's he's eligible at second base and shortstop uh dan is a little gun shy, but he's a fan of CJ Abrams. He drafted him very high last year, thinking he was going to break through, and he struggled. He went to Washington is not a great hitters park. The good no. news is they will give him the longest I, leash in the world. I mean, and if he delivers I, I on him when the he was hype, a Padre, right? If he delivers on the hype, he's more of a speed than power guy. Um, but I mean, second base, shortstop eligibility. If you're going to bat 300 and steal 40 bags, you're going to be in this league a really long time. And and so the question is, do you have to pounce on him now? Uh, so Anthony Rodriguez had this question: C.J. Abrams finally breaking out. Is it real? And one thing that I'm, I, you know, it's interesting. I'm always learning because the game does change, and you also can learn things. And and one of the things I've learned is rookie hitters usually don't pan out, but second year hitters, when they have that that level and, and they and let's be a honest, look at things, they can. He's, he's done pretty well recently, but he's still only hitting two forty five with two home runs and three stolen bases on the season. Yeah. yeah he's a streaker guy. Streaker. But listen, streaker, if he, streaker. if he, if he had stolen, let's say two more bases, he'd be almost universally owned. Streaker, because... streaker, streaker. Okay. Streaker. Uh, we got a couple of comments. Anthony Rodriguez said, what's up uncle Ted. See you all the time in the CBS fantasy live stream. Good to see you fans knowing each other. Uncle Ted then said Ezekiel Duran and Vargas should be starting on 99% of teams. All right. Let's analyze that number. Do we think Uncle Ted is right? Uncle Ted's been right about a lot of things. 99% of teams. 99% of leagues. I don't think I would say teams. Well, well I would say rostered. Yeah, um, and 99% of leagues. But, so, but I understand what he's saying. Ro- Duran right rosters. now is super hot. Vargas is super hot. So, yeah, they should be owned and started. It, it also, it also depends on the league and how, how deep the benches are. But there you I, go. But I think Uncle Ted's point is these guys are underrated players. Vargas is the one of the two that I'd want to – um, roster going forward more because of Duran's uh, propensity to get hot and then and fade. But I'm not saying he's not that he's going to fade. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, Sometimes these guys break through. And this is what becomes important. Like there's too many people, like let's say you own Trey Turner and Ezekiel Duran right now. There is no way Turner should be starting over Duran, but 99% of owners are going to say, they can't help it. Trey but, Turner's my guy, but he's in the last 14 days the 686th ranked player in Yahoo. Well, let, let me ask this, guys. How important is it to bench some of your best players when they're just playing terribly? Like, how often do you do that? I think it's one of the hardest things to do, but sometimes it's the most important thing. I yeah. mean, I mean a, bra- a good example is a Brayu in Houston, zero home runs this year. 
no power at all. RBI stats are. He was my down. best pick, by the way. His, but his batting average is horrible. <laughs> I mean, what do bench him? Yeah, you do. Bench I think him. I think it's easier to do it in baseball, in yeah. a daily league, because right. there's 162 games. If you miss the breakout game that gets right. him out of you, a slump, you're fine. But in like football, where there's only 17 games or 14, if you're talking in the regular season, you miss that star's comeback game, and you're kind of just ruined in yep. some ways. So yeah, right, Uncle... scoring a lot of runs right now is the Atlanta Braves. I mean, they're just piling oh home runs. I'm enjoying Ozzy Albies. I have to say that. I mean, it's all they do is he's score been, there. I, I heard, a, I heard a funny thing about Ozzy Albies, which is like, everyone was saying, Oh, he's not stealing bases. And somebody said, you can't steal bases when you keep hitting home runs. Right. <laughs> which, which is part of what's going on. It's the okay. opposite of what they said about Billy Hamilton. You, you can't steal first. You can't steal first base. <laughs> Uncle Ted says, Leody Tavares is another Ranger to watch. He's a speedster. Um, no, you can't get on first. It could be well, a problem. But if you figure out how to get on first, that, that yeah. that's that's something to watch. Okay. Then Uncle Ted says, players are like oranges. Get the squeeze. When they're done, find another. You do have to do some of that. Some of the back end of your roster has got to be like that. And, you know, even a guy like Rooker, I could see Rooker just going in the tank. But for now, I'm going to, I'm not only yeah, going to pick ride, him up. You got to ride the hot wave. Right. I mean, he's so hot that it's it's just ridiculous. Uh, Uncle Ted said, "There's always someone I like on the wa on the waiver." Yeah, listen, there's to me, there's multiple players I always want. This is why uh, Casey and I certainly always talk about this. Ross, I think you agree. Two for one deals are, are awesome. You get the best player in the deal. You get and some room to go spot. out searching for that next that next player. Unfortunately, I think a lot of managers have gotten wise to that. So sometimes you have to disguise it as a two for two deal. Where you're you're throwing in somebody, and you're yeah. I'll I'll take this guy from you, and they're like, oh good, it's not a two for one deal. It is because I'm cutting that guy. You know, I want to continue a theme here real quick. I'm going to name two prospects um, yep. that I think who are in the minors that people should keep an eye on. I already talked about Abbott. Um, hey, I'm Abbott. Gonna, I'm going to name another. Hey, Abbott. Hey. I I'm... said it first. You steal my stuff. Keep going. I, I'm going to name another Cincinnati Red, Ross. Here you go. This guy might have been the best hitter on the Reds in all of spring training and got sent down, oh. which is Christian Encarnacion Strand. Yeah, uh, the first base. 100 percent right. I was pissed. So they sent him to the minors. And what has he done down there? 410 with four home runs, nine RBIs, and a one point a, a one point two two one OPS, an OPS over twelve hundred. Like in the minors last year, he batted over three hundred and hit thirty two home runs and drove in one hundred and fourteen runs. So it's not like this is a guy who hasn't consistently proven it. And the Reds have a gaping hole at first base right now. I don't, I don't know why this guy isn't up, but if he's available and you need first base help and you need power, imagine getting that type of hitter in Cincinnati, 80 games of the year. So Just I would bring do that him one. up. What's and the, the, point? the second yeah. one is the Baltimore Orioles. They are second in the AL East because nobody could beat Tampa Bay right now. Um, and they're they're looking to make a run for it. They have this kid in the minors in the outfield, Colton Kowser, who is just a dynamic, dynamic athlete and and, and outfielder. Last year, 278, 19 home runs, 18 stolen bases. This year, he's already at this point, he's 324 with five home runs, four stolen bases, a 1,000 OPS, and a, a 23 walks to 28 strikeouts. So he also is an on-base machine. I think his on-base average right now is um, over 400. Um, his on base is 457. Like, okay, so you're telling me that I should cut my Oakland catcher and pick him up. I understand. Well, the, the only problem with that is is that there's no room for him to start in Baltimore. Well, for now, but well, one injury away. I, I mean, Cedric Mullins is in center field, right? So well, listen, Mullins, also, Hayes, Salamander. It's, it's also different if you're if you're in a keeper league. That's different. You know, because he could emerge as a keeper and be a really useful player. I'm saying they, 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 the outfield in in, in a redraft kind of league, bad. you probably don't need to bother with. Look, um, Santander is batting 230 with only two home runs. Adam yeah. Frazier is batting 220 with three home runs. Well, he plays Mullins second, and Hayes have been great, but nobody else is batting well at all. Yeah. So, so I mean, conventional wisdom will always tell you, oh, there's no room for this guy. But then if they're hitting that well. Uh, you're right. there. You might be right, Ross. We'll, we'll have to see. No, I'm not saying. No, I mean, I, I, I like but when again, they bring up the young talent. It's just the problem is they want the young talent to get at bats. And if they're going to come to the major leagues and just ride the 
bench. It's a waste of time. It's it's a stupid. No, move. I understand that. But if they're in second place come the end of May, and Santander's still batting below the Mendo- I, or at the Mendoza the- line. I think they call him up because they love it. And it's used. good to be ahead of the curve. I mean, I, right, I we're wish, only a couple weeks away from that. Do that. We're only a couple weeks away from it. All right. I'm going to catch up on some, uh, some of the comments. Anthony Rodriguez says, I'm an Astros fan. Abreu looks cooked. I think we all agree yeah, with well, that. What's, what's wrong with the break in all seriousness? Like, well, his bat speed was slower bat speed last probably year. Went down. I yeah. mean, yeah, but he's not, I mean, not, but he was never an thing. elite athlete. Like, I, yeah, but, he does get RBIs. He's known to be an RBI guy. That's not true. And he does well, have. I mean, power. before last year, before last year, he was a really, really. He was a dynamic, I mean, You're good talking player. about a guy that 100 RBIs almost every season when he plays, except maybe a couple. Uh, Uncle Ted and, says and so. Abreu hits 15 homers next <laughs> next week. I mean, he the sounds like is, one of us. No home yeah. runs. He's always hit like around 30. Casey, I would say in this. Yeah, career. he's at 30 to 35 with 125 RBIs. And that's RBIs. in Chicago for the White Sox. So it, the White Sox are playing a little better too. And it's like, I, I just don't get what's going on with him in Houston. He has an unbelievable lineup around him. So it's not like they're pitching around a brave. They're not. I just don't get what's going on. And I, I think you're right. I think he is cooked. I think he's old. And I think the White Sox knew it when they traded him. And bravo to the White Sox. They have Andrew Vaughn playing first, and he's 20 times better. Yeah, and I, I wonder who the Astros are going to end up bringing up uh, or trading for yeah. or trading for okay uncle ted says james wood uh he got hurt i didn't know that he got hurt he james wood is very big top james prospect. woods the actor are we talking about uh james woods is he has no future in baseball but okay, james yeah, okay. wood does okay. the estimated call up for james wood that i last saw was um 2028 I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to be up much sooner than that. 2028. But, <laughs> isn't it crazy? Anthony Rodriguez says, uh, I got you mentioned like, you mentioned like you're, you're playing baseball, you're drafted and you're all excited to be major leagues. And you go, you go to like the prospect page or whatever you get the information from. And you see your name you and you see 2028 next to it. You're like, what year is it? 2023. Oh my God. I think my kids graduate high school. Five years I gotta wait to play major league baseball. Are you serious? All right. Now Anthony Rodriguez says I got James Woods stashed in my dynasty league. Kid's going to be a boss. In dynasty leagues, this is the kind of guy who I mean he probably was like the number one rookie pick, I would think. Um, he's James certainly Wood. one of those up there. Okay, yes. Encarnacion Strand uh in nine <laughs> games back has oh, I don't know if maybe he's talking about somebody else. Encarnacion. No, he's talking about Encarnacion Strand. He had okay, all four home runs have been in the last nine games got since it. he came back. Okay, and Santander hasn't been lights up. I know he's been terrible. Anthony, uh, poor, I like him too. This, I think, is an important point. There's always room for hot bats. It's really true because, you know, baseball teams, they're not like fantasy teams. They don't sit there and think, if I bench him, he's going to go off. Uh, I mean, we say it all the time. It's like, I benched him, you're welcome. And suddenly it helps everybody else. In the major leagues, if it's a hot bat, they'll play him one game. They want they want to get these guys good. Now, uh, here's another big call up when it happens: is Yuri Perez. How's he been doing in the minors, guys? Ross, that's I have a, no idea. That's I, a, he's been great. He hasn't been there. I mean, he's always been good. He can miss bats at an elite level. I just think um, Abbott, Andrew Abbott, has been pitching. I mean, Perez. I know it's one of their top ten prospects. I, I he's I number two they're... on their prospects. I think is it two behind Ellie, and... Ellie De La Cruz. Alade Cruz, who I love. I wish he made the roster for the Reds. Um, but I, I think I think these guys are going to be up pretty soon. I mean, I, I would bring up all these guys if I was Cincinnati. Abreu won okay. the MVP just two years ago. 100% right. And look at this. DR players are ageless. And it's true. They often don't even know what I'm sorry. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody else. Uri Perez is the Marlins' top prospect. I got that one wrong. So oh 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 oh, I see. Yes, no. So I'm, I apologize. I, I was talking Cincinnati. He's not. I've been so focused on Cincinnati. I, today. I, I was like, how did we get on Cincinnati? What happened there? So um, was but was Bartolo was Bartolo Colon from the Dominican Republic? I can't remember. I just know that we never knew what age he was. You know, I I, I, I follow Bartolo Colon on on Instagram. I suggest you guys do too. And he's always like hinting he wants to come back. Dominican. And pitch. Yes. So he, he he shows himself like war, what was like, his nickname? Uh, Ageless. I don't know. Uh, there was some hilarious. Oh, Hepe. I, I have no idea what his name. No, no I'll idea. I'll check. El Hepe. Or, but, or or Uncle Ted Anthony Rodriguez. So they, he shows Al himself like working out. And Abreu you know, is Cuban, not Dominican. I thought Abreu was Cuban. Um, 
but Cologne always shows has videos of himself like working out. Oh, Anthony Rodriguez says it's big sexy, which I think is right. Yeah, I, I love Cologne. He's like he should pick still awesome. he was big. I don't I don't know that I remember when he hit the one home run he hit in his career yes, that against was, the Mets. I do great. remember that. I do. loved it. All right. Uh let's see. Oh no, and Carnacion got hurt, not wood. Okay. He, I didn't know that. Did you know that case? He's not hurt right now. Uh, it sounds like he just got hurt. Check it out. Uncle Ted is he's he's Johnny. Minor league ball. baseball. You guys really follow minor league baseball. I follow a little bit with the Reds, but I, I really don't follow it all all through the league. I really don't. I don't have the time. I, I, I mean, I don't follow it hugely, but I definitely keep an eye on some of the. I, really like, I, check, I usually try to take one afternoon like, a week to look I'm at still news. watching. I'm watching Jackson Churio just to see. Is this guy going to explode? Because it, he could come up soon. And this is because it's a keeper league, guys. In yeah. a redraft league, I wouldn't be doing that. Uncle Ted says Bryce Miller should be everyone's top priority. Uh, really? Add even over Zeke. Um, you know, another guy that's not a rookie, good. but ha is having a pretty good year, who I talked about last season, and he's a Dodger pro. He was a Dodger prospect for years, and the Dodgers traded him for trade. I think trade turn that trade Turner thing, I believe, um, is Josana Gray. And he's his area is under three for the season. He's pitching great. Oh, his, Josiah, yes. Josiah Gray, he's pitching so <clears> good <throat> right now. I mentioned him last week as a priority. And he did. Uh, and the only thing he does, he doesn't pass Dan Dr. Dan Ratner's litmus test with strikeouts and innings. He has like 33 innings. It's pitch. really I'm guilty as charged at it's this point. 33 right. innings pitch with 31 strikeouts. So he's almost there. Almost. All right. Uncle Ted is setting us straight. And Carnacion got hurt at the start of the season and his back ends on fire. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I was right with playing. the world. That's what we thought was happening. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Rodriguez says Abreu is Cuban. So he's really 45. It. I mean, it's true. Some of the Cuban players, they could be like 58. I mean, Bartolo Colon might be 71. He might be my grandfather. You, you, you have to sign up for his Instagram. It's so it's great. I'm gonna do it. Uh, Uncle Ted says, "Duh, White Sox," and I don't know what that was referring to. Was that White, White Sox are playing better, better, Uncle? Uh, White Sox are playing better. They started off horribly. I agree, hundred percent. But they've been playing better the past couple weeks. And again, oh. I great team on paper, just horrible when they play. I and know. I think he's saying they're all Cubans. Uh, they are Robert, all those guys. You're Andrew Vaughn. No, I'm kidding. Right. Andrew Vaughn, Lucas Gilato. Yeah. So before we wrap up, we're going to wrap up in a couple minutes. Are there any other priority pickups that we really haven't talked about? Just guys who are, and remember, we usually talk 60% and under in terms of rostership on Yahoo. Who are the guys that you're looking at that you want to scoop up? You know who's been playing really well lately? I mean, he. He's hitting 370 the past two weeks. He has like 10 That's RBIs and two home runs. Is Matt Carpenter of San Diego Padres. Great mustache, too. I wish I could grow a mustache like that. I definitely would have it. But I can't grow a mustache like that, Casey. I can never do it. But Matt Carpenter is, is on fire. And that Padre lineup is finally coming together. It could be a good pickup for you to pick him up now because – all I, all I see is that Padre team getting better and better and better and getting stronger. And I, I as I said before, I think they're the team to beat in the National League. Well, I see Atlanta is, but the Padres are a close second. Uh, but I, I like Matt Carpenter a lot. I think it's a good pickup this week. Let me ask, would you guys, what do you guys think of Connor Joe? I'm trying to figure out what to make of. His batting his average will hurt you. But he he he, he's, he gets our he's a good guy that gets RBIs. He's on a hot team on Pittsburgh, scoring a another, lot of runs too. Another Dodger, another guy that came up with the Dodgers. Uh, I've always liked him. It's just with him, it's, it's his batting average always gets in the way. I think I I I'm going to name a pitcher just to move on. Michael King for oh, the yeah. Yankees. Tell me why, Michael. Well, King. because Clay Holmes has Clay Holmes. stunk, and <laughs> Michael King. Is is hold on, let's talk about Clay Holmes. Has you gotten see when they took out your mate Jermaine. Is that how you say it? Not German, Domingo Herman. Herman, they took out Herman and they put in Holmes. Herman was pitching a beautiful game, okay, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful game. And so, I think if you can get the Yankees are starting to win again, they're winning some close games, so save opportunities are going to come. And if you can have the Yankees closer, who's only 37% owned right now, I think you got to scoop it up. I'm picking him up right now. I want to beat Casey on this one for sure. All right, now Uncle Ted has another one to recommend, which is Bailey Ober. 
Another great sneaky ad. Anthony Rodriguez is saying Nick Senzel showing signs of life. Casey had mentioned Talk him. about Senzel. Still Thank pretty young. Uh, anybody else to mention before we wrap up here? There's always Mr. great Connor pickups. Joe, Matt Carpenter. Uh, I, I will he's say. He's 61% I mean, owned, so he doesn't fit. But Mitch Keller ah! continues to pitch very well for Pittsburgh. Uh, you have been pushing Mitch Keller all season, and you've I been right. Mitch Keller. He was a starting pitcher opening day. Did you know that, Casey Scheinberg? I did know that. Oh, one of Uncle Ted's favorites, Dane Dunning. He says, there's another name to watch again. As long as DeGrom is out, Dunning will start, and he could be great for 12 to 15 team leagues. Yeah, deeper I, leagues. That makes I still, sense. I think that's a good, good deeper league pickup. All right, guys, let's wrap up for today. We'll be back here Thursdays, as always. We're here at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 p.m. Pacific. And we also will have some shorts coming out to you each week telling you who to pick up. It's really important to stay on top of the wire throughout the year. You know, at the beginning, you don't want to miss out on the, those big names. And towards the end, people are cutting players they shouldn't be cutting. you got to pay attention. Thanks, Not Anthony. just to who to add, but who got cut. Guys, it has been a pleasure. Casey, Ross, thanks so much for being here. And we will see you next week.